Welcome to SAP Production Planning Training. Today we're going to cover the topic overview of production processes. So in this topic, basically we'll talk about uh, just an overview of how the SAP production processes works in SAP and also we're talking about the SAP navigation. So the topics that we're going to cover, they are order to cache cycle, types of data in SAP, organizational structure in SAP, manufacturing types, and SAP navigation. So let us start with order to cache cycle. Now typically what happens in a business scenario? Okay, so let's see a, an overview. So first of all, say here you can see number one, which is a customer. Okay, they will place an order for us. They will send us an order and the order will be received by SD department, sales and distribution department, which is number two. So customer will send the order, sales department will receive the order and they will create a sales order in SAP SD system. Then, so say my company company is manufacturing say laptop. We receive uh, an order for few laptops. So we receive the order, and the third step will be material management. We need to manufacture the laptop. Now, of course, to manufacture something, we need some raw materials. So the material management or the MM module will do some planning. Okay, and if we need some raw materials, say we need to buy some motherboard, hard disk, screens, and all that. So the material management department will, if we do not have enough stock, then MM department will place an order, purchase order for our vendor to deliver the raw material. So step number four will be, vendor will receive a purchase order and they will supply us the raw material, whatever we need. And the number five step will be production planning. So now, the production of the laptop will start here because we received all the raw materials. And once the production is done, we'll send the goods to the customer. We'll ship the goods, ship the laptop to the customer. And finally, once the goods are delivered to the customer, uh, the data will be flown to, or the confirmation will be flown to the finance department so that invoices will be sent to the customer and also the vendor will be paid for the raw materials okay so that is how a typical environment works in sap or in a business process so we receive the order and then planning and then production and finally invoicing types of data in sap we have basically three types of data in sap number one is master data number two is transactional data number three is customizing data okay so master data let's discuss about master data so master data everything involves around master data basically okay so master data we have different types of master data for example we can have um, a material master data material master record in the next chapter will in the next video i'll show you in detail about master data and all that and other type of work master data is work center work center means machine we have bill of material we'll talk it later routing we'll talk it later so these types of master data we have in our standard sap we will create this master data so that this master data can be used by the transactional data so let's see what is transactional data so transaction data means when we create a transaction so the transaction can be creating a production order in sap pp creating a sales order in sap sd or can be a creating a purchase order in sap mm so these are the transaction so whenever we create a transaction system will read the master data and get the information from the master data for example when you create a production order, you need to enter some material. You need to enter some material code.
whatever the material you want to manufacture. So that means you enter the material code here only, but system will fetch all the details of the material like description, units of measure, weight, and all that from the material master record. So we'll see this in particular later on. This is just an overview. Same goes for sales order. So basically, you can think like if you look at the bottom uh, of the picture here, you can see um, we have say basically two types of material. So we're using the raw material to man to manufacture the finished goods. All right. So for the finished goods. When the customer will be placing an order, which is sales order, okay, so we'll be using the finished goods in the sales order that we need to deliver. However, for the raw material, we need to purchase. So we need to purchase the raw material, we'll create a purchase order and send it to the vendor for purchasing purpose. So once we receive the raw material, then we'll be creating a, a production order. So production order will be created and Production order will be created and it will be showing that we'll use this raw material to make this finished goods. Okay, so that is how the master data will work. Then, then we have customizing data. What is customizing data? Customizing data is that we customizing the system. Okay, so as I said earlier, this training is all about me basically learning customizing how we can customizing the SAP solution for a, a business requirement. Okay, can be automobile industry, can be pharmaceutical company. So how we can customize the data? So that's the customizing data. So you can, as I said, you can divide the data into three types: master data, transaction data, customizing data. So depending on the customizing system will have a different behavior the way we want it. So we'll talk about customizing later on. Then we have org structure in SAP. What is org structure in SAP? So here you can see in just an overview of the SAP SD sales and distribution org structure. Okay, so in SD what they use is um, they have a sales area. Okay, now few of the org units remains the same for SD, MM, and PP module. However, all these modules have their own org structure. Okay, so here I'm just giving you overview. Like they have a sales organization in SD, they have a distribution channel, they have a division, and they have shipping point. However, the company code they also use, they also use the plant, they also use the storage location. But these three things, company code, company code, plant, and store location, they are commonly used between SD, MM, and PP. So these are the common org, structure, org, org units. Then if you look here, SAP MM org structure. Here also you can see they basically using um, uh, here at the bottom, you can see on bottom of the screen, you can see purchasing organization and purchasing group. This is specific to SAP MM. However, the SAP MM also uses client, company code, plant, store location. Now these, again, these org units will be commonly used between SD, MM and PP. Then finally, when you look into the PP org structure, here we also using plant, basically plant and plant have plants are assigned to company codes company codes are assigned to controlling area controlling area assigned to client again the client the client here the controlling area the company code and the plant are commonly used as i said between different modules so once we start some customizing of the org structure later on i will be showing you how you can customize the org structure from scratch Now we'll discuss about manufacturing types. What is manufacturing types? Now from SAP PP module perspective, we have three types of manufacturing in SAP PP system. Number one is repetitive manufacturing. 
then we have discrete manufacturing and then we have process industries okay now we'll discuss about detail about each of them later on but here i'm just giving an overview about what does it mean now repetitive manufacturing is in this type of manufacturing products remains remain unchanged over a longer period and are not manufactured in individual defined lots that means continuation continuous production is going on for a specific product there is no stoppage no lot size no fixed quantity no changes so only constant production of one particular material over a long period of, of time okay as the name is saying repetitive okay so <clears throat> repeat that means repeat instead a total quantity is produced over a certain period of at a certain rate okay so that means one constant production of a product and the total quantity is produced over a certain period and a certain rate then the second type we have is discrete manufacturing so in discrete manufacturing in this type involves varying the sequence of work center through which the products can pass during production okay so work center means machines we'll talk about work center in a separate topic later on but for now in this type of manufacturing one product can be going through different machines okay for example if you need to manufacture a uh, a car or a bike then it's not only one machine that we can that can make all the component can make the 100 percent of the product ready so the the car or the the product will be going through different machines different work center okay so that's discrete manufacturing and then the order of work center or the machine is determined in routing which can often be very complex okay so We'll create all the data in routing. Routing is a master data. We'll talk about routing later on. But we'll define that a product will be passing through these machines in a master data known as routing. So routing will be defined that whether this process, this product will be going through which machines, what sequence and all that. Again, we'll discuss them later on in detail. There can be waiting times between the individual work center. So if the product is going through machine number one that needs to go through machine number two and three but machine number two and three may be busy and there can be waiting times for this product to to be processed on those machines that's what it means then the third type is process manufacturing this is used mainly in a process industry where in process is usually batch managed okay so this is basically where the product is manufactured in batches okay in a batch size batch lot in this manufacturing you copy the process described in the master recipe and adjust it to the actual production run so you copy whatever the recipe required to make the product from the master recipe it is primarily designed for the chemical, pharmaceutical, food and beverage industries as well as the batch oriented electronic in industry. That means if you think about any pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical company or a food company or a chemical company, if they need to say pharmaceutical company, they need to make some medicine. What will they will do? There's a fixed formula to make them that medicine. So that's where the master recipe will come into picture so the formula will be copied from the master recipe and then the medicine will be created same goes for goes for food or any beverage or any chemical so that's a process manufacturing now all these three manufacturing will talk later on in more details <clears throat> 